Are you keto and wondering what happens if you stray off keto, if you start adding carbs back into your diet? Well, let me tell you something. I lost 36 inches and 30 pounds going keto. And the end of last year, with my doctor's instructions, I started incorporating carbs back into my life. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you what those results were. And here's a hint, I'm back on keto this year. Tune in to hear my experience. Welcome back to The Kelly O Show. And I am going to tell you how damn proud I am of myself because why are we up here in my completely unfinished, what's going to be my YouTube studio slash dressing room. I've been talking about that for a while, but uh, we'll catch up on that topic later. Why are we filming up here? And why am I filming up here while I'm clearly doing my just dried hair? Well, <laughs> there's several reasons for that. And um, I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you. <laughs> A, I obviously need to do my hair. But um, I gave myself a challenge and this is partially from my husband, it's partially from my assistant. And it goes a little something like this. I have been <laughs> trying to get back into consistently publishing on my YouTube channel, um, as most of you know, for quite a while. And one of the things I realized I was doing is with relaunching my YouTube channel, um, I got into this thing with thinking everything just had to be this like penultimate. I'm gonna start doing my hair while I'm talking to you. Um, this penultimate perfect um, production. You know, I'm filming right now on my brand new camera that I convinced um, my husband to buy for me, which I absolutely love. Um, prior to that, I was shooting with my iPhone, and years before, I was shooting with a, whole, a totally different camcorder in the early years, and so on and so forth. Um, but, you know, I'd made this decision that I was really gonna go, you know, double down on my YouTube channel and post a lot of content. And then one of one of the things that I love about myself, but also it can be a drawback, is I love to learn. So the problem is, is I started watching all these YouTube videos and I started taking all these courses about editing videos and how to post and when the best time to post, you know, learning all this stuff. And the problem is, is I, I wasn't posting. And so it was funny because, um, and then there was also, you know, the truth is, um, I've been dealing with a lot of my migraine issues the past year. Um, I was diagnosed with, and these are things we're gonna talk about in separate videos. Um, I was diagnosed with PTSD, so I've been dealing with that. Um, had a lot of health issues last year, um, which benched me. I mean, the, when I tell you guys that my migraines were back, um, I will link up down below to one of my videos on migraines and my podcast that I did on migraines. If any of you suffer from chronic headaches or migraines, you're going to want to, you know, check that out. I've got a lot of resources for you there, but you know, migraines can be debilitating. Thank God. Um, and I'm actually going to be going to pick up this prescription this evening. We finally got it approved. It's a prescription for Nurtec. It's a brand new, um, drug that is out specifically for migraines and it actually works. It is obscenely, obscenely expensive. Um, but anyway, um, so, you know, one of the things that my assistant and my husband had kind of, you know, brought to my attention was, you know, stop. We were shooting video in the kitchen while we were cooking the other night. And I was all like, oh, I can't post this. The lighting wasn't good. It was at night and it was too dark. And you know, my assistant Angie's like, Kelly, just, just post the stuff. Like stop thinking you have to redo everything and reshoot everything and start next week. And, and then I realized like, you know what? I'm not following my own advice because what do I tell people that I coach in my keto coaching programs? You don't have to wait till Monday. You don't have to wait till the first of the month. You don't have to wait till tomorrow. You can start eating right today. You can start eating low carb today. You don't have to wait for anything. Just, and, and actually, when I started keto, I remember that that's what I did. I was like, you know, a Tuesday, I'm like, I'm starting today. And when I just decided recently I was going back 
on keto, uh, which I'm going to discuss in this video. Um, that was it was just this decision I did at my at my kitchen counter. I'd had enough of the stomach aches. I'd had enough of you know deciding what uh, approach I was going to do for getting back into my health and wellness journey this this year after being again so uh, unwell last year. And I'm like, this is what I'm doing. Why wait? Why overanalyze? Let's just do it. Let's just start today. And that's what I did. So same thing here with, uh, with my YouTube. And so I was downstairs in my office a little while ago and I'm like, oh, okay, well, I've got to shoot my video and my husband's home. We're going to be cooking and it's already three o'clock and I, I, I've got to straighten my hair before I shoot my video. And then I'm like, you know what? Here's the topic that I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about some of the lessons I've learned going off of keto, or, or going off, I, I don't want to say going off keto, going off strict keto uh, at the end of last year, and why I'm back, why I, you know, leading up to why I'm going back on keto. And as I'm sitting in my office obsessing over, I've got to do my hair, I've got, I want to shoot well at stay time, and then all the other things that I have to do today for my business, before the end of the business and obsessing over when I'm gonna get free. I'm like, you know what? Take your damn camera upstairs and do your hair while you're shooting your video. So that's where that's where we're at, people. You guys are up here with me, and you might get some unflattering views of me while I do my hair. Um, but hey, that's what we're doing. And I will just say this as a side: getting my hair cut in this bob that I did whenever it was that I did. And then I, you probably saw that I was trying to grow my bangs out for a while. <laughs> Please feel free, any of you. If I ever think that I'm gonna grow my bangs out again, just write in the comments. Kelly, you're crazy. I am not meant to ever not have bangs. Um, I actually cut my own bangs before I went in recently. Just went in a week or so ago to get my hair color, get my roots touched up. And uh, my hairdresser actually said, she's like, you did a pretty good job. I have really professional scissors here so that when something bothers me, I can just trim it myself. I don't use like ghetto scissors, you know, that are gonna hurt my hair. But like if something needs trimmed, like right here, I can feel it. I'm gonna just trim it myself. <laughs> Of course, it's gonna get stuck on my eyelashes. <sighs> but anyway, so you guys are going to chat with me while I'm up here um, getting all of the, what's the word I'm looking for? Frizz out of my hair. Can I just also say, I've never had frizz or, yeah, I think that's just really the word I'm looking for, frizziness in my hair until I moved to Texas, never. I have, I mean, what you're seeing here, is annoying. No, what you're seeing here is, you know, my hair is bone straight because I just trimmed it. There's little hairs on my face. Um, what you're seeing here is bone straight hair, but it is just amazing how the humidity in Texas, I've never ever had to deal with frizzy or flyaway hair at all um, till I moved down here. But I will say this, I am just, I loved my hair long, and I, I will never say that I won't go long again. Um, I just really love this bob cut, and I'm so glad I did this like blunt cut this time. It's it's really a lot easier than last time I got a bob. It was shorter in the back and longer in the front. It kind of needed me to curl it under and do a lot more styling. Um, I'm gonna bring you guys with me to get some hairspray over here in the worst lighting ever. There's a lot of, um, sorry, I need to have you guys come up here. I have been using the same Paul Mitchell hairspray on my hair for as long as I, honestly, since high school. So I graduated in 1987. That's as long as I've been using this hairspray. But then the other hair products, for what it's worth, and we'll do a whole separate um, hair. I have to kind of like lay down because my tripod, I don't feel like I'm messing with my tripod. But the other products that I'm really using the most of right now are all of these Moroccan, this Moroccan stuff. They have a pretty good dry shampoo, 
I really like this root boost. I'll link all the stuff up down below. This perfect defense is really good for spraying on your hair um, before you start to use a, a hot tool on it. And then um, their mousse is pretty good. Um, the other company that I've really liked using prior to this has been Kenra. Oh, that's right, Kenra. Um, I have to be honest though with you, lately, some of the stuff that I've been buying from them, and maybe it's because I ordered it on Amazon, um, has been a little disappointing. So I'm gonna try this right now right in front of you. It's called Dry Texture Spray. I'm no pro. So I really don't know what, I'm, what this is supposed to do to my hair. I think it just kind of gives it some body. Oh wait, no, I can feel it. It's giving it some texture there in the back. Hence why they call it Dry Texture Spray. Um, it's not necessarily what I was planning to do. So let's come back over here. Um, and maybe maybe I'll take you guys back downstairs and we'll finish this conversation down there. What do you think about that? I think so. Hey guys, sorry, I decided, I decided to change my mind because while I'm up here and I have my, uh, my makeup mirror, I'm gonna do a little bit of a touch up on my makeup. And then um, if we have to go downstairs and finish this conversation, but uh, the topic of today's video is, and let me just get the makeup brush that I want to use, which by the way, this very messy little compact that I have here is my Saint makeup, which is the cream makeup that I switched to um, a little over a year ago. And I have to tell you guys, I just want to say this as an aside, I am so obsessed with this stuff. Um, I will link to the post I did on this. You can see how, if I just want to touch up certain areas, you know, like I have a couple of these, like, I don't even know what to call them. When you get older, things just show up on your body. And you're like, what the hell is that? It's like a spot or a bump, and you just have all kinds of issues. But that's what plastic surgeries, plastic surgeries are for, dermatologists, and elected cosmetic procedures are for. At all, those of you that know me know what I'm talking about. But anyway, just so that you know what I'm using, I will link this down below. Um, if you would like to order from me, you guys, this, I just wanna say it again, this cream makeup that I'm using is, it goes on, it covers, it feels light as a feather. You don't feel like you have mayonnaise on your face. Like that's how I always used to feel with my other makeup. And um, so it gives you coverage and uh, um, it's far more reasonable when you compare the costs as well to other foundations. I spend so much less on foundation, um, but it's like Photoshop for your skin. Oh, I already have to trim my bangs again. I literally just trimmed them like two days ago. I think what I did is I just don't trim them enough. So let's get back to um, talking about um, keto. And, and for those of you, you might have seen me mention this in some of my recent videos, but you know, to introduce those of you who might be watching this video for the first time, um, I went, uh, or might be new to my channel, I went keto June 1st of 2021 and lost, uh, after being stuck, unable to lose weight, do that thing with your mouth. Unable to lose weight, no matter how hard I tried, um, I was able to lose 36 inches and 30 pounds um, going keto at the urging or at the instruction of my functional medicine doctor. And I'm also going to link up this lipstick. I found this, I discovered this from another YouTuber. And it is ridiculously reasonable. I think it's like $12 on Amazon. So it comes with, I'm gonna show you, it comes like this. Um, this is what it is, and I'll link this down below. There's several best selling colors, but you will get the, I bought a whole case. You get the tub. YouTube beauty blogger. Uh, so you get the lipstick and the lip liner. 
for that like, it's, it's like 14 bucks or 12 bucks, something like that. But this is actually the darkest lipstick that I will wear and I'm totally okay with that. So, um, lost, lost that weight, had a great experience going keto. I went keto, had a had great success. I stayed keto, strict keto for, um, because I got down not only to my goal weight of 138, I'm 5'5", 5 .5, 53 years old. Um, I got down to my goal weight of 138, but then I surpassed it and I got down to 134. And when I was down to 134, that's when I started to, honestly, I was surprised, because you know how women are, us ladies. We we're always like, oh, you know, nothing tastes as good as being skinny feels or whatever. That's not necessarily my mantra, but you know what I'm saying. Women are usually like, oh, it doesn't matter if I keep losing, that's okay. Um, I was starting to not like how I looked. Um, I really lost a lot of my boobs. My husband did not appreciate that. I really was, I had like a flat butt. Um, I basically was feeling very skinny fat. Now, mind you, the whole time I was keto, I was also dealing with migraine issues, the PTSD kind of stuff. Um, and so I wasn't working out a lot. And so I, it was amazing that I lost all this weight without having to do a lot of working out. But at that point, I was ready to, I hate using these phrases, tone up, you know, I was ready to get my muscle back. And I knew that I probably needed to start adding carbs back into my diet. So I had a consult with my functional medicine doctor. He said, it is not a good idea to be strict keto for the rest of your life. You absolutely need to be at some point adding carbs back in or doing high carb days or cheat days, whatever you want to call them, because your body needs those carbs. It needs to, your mitochondria need this for cell turnover. I mean, she mentioned a lot of kind of stuff, but essentially I got the idea you know, our bodies are not supposed to be on strict keto forever. So I was like, okay, I need to embrace this. Now she told me to prepare myself mentally for when I started adding carbs back in. She just said, get ready because you will immediately gain anywhere from seven to 10 pounds. And that is definitely what happened. Now, here's what I regret. I really deeply regret um, getting away from my habit of measuring myself on a regular basis for me, weighing myself every day, I know that can be a sensitive topic. Some people will probably attack me for saying this and go, oh, you're promoting diet culture, blah, 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 whatever. Have your own opinion about it. I see both sides. For me, when I'm not weighing myself, I end up having more mental issues around what my fear is of what I weigh. Whereas when I weigh myself every day, I don't, attach such a value to the number on the scale. I don't end up caring what I weigh. When I haven't weighed myself in a while, I end up becoming terrified of what I weigh. I, especially if I think I've gained weight, um, it becomes this very strange psychological phenomena. So for me, it's actually better to weigh myself on a regular basis to get over that emotional issue that is a personal thing for me. Um, and that's also true for quite a lot of my clients, quite frankly, that I coach. Um, and then secondly, it also helps from a historical reference perspective, just to have that data to be able to reflect on. Because what was nice is that now that I'm going back on keto, I can look at my whole weight loss record, how I lost the weight, how I lost the inches, you know, what the timeline was and kind of know, okay, here's what I should expect. Um, here's where I'm at right now, da, da 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 So I deeply regret that because during this time, which was essentially, I'd say the last three to four months of last year of 2022, I started adding back in carbs uh, to my diet. I was not um, weighing myself. I wasn't taking, I didn't take measurements when I started. I didn't weigh myself when I started. I think I'd gotten to the point where I was so confident and had been far beyond my goal weight and had been keeping it off effortlessly for so long that I don't want to say I thought it was, I was incapable of gaining weight. I didn't have that attitude at all. I also wasn't tracking um, on a daily basis, what carbs I was adding, what my calories were, what my percentages of macros were. So 
I have a general idea retroactively of what I was eating and that I wasn't really increasing the amount of food I was eating, but certainly my proportions of macros change pretty dramatically from keto, which is high fat, relatively high protein, low carb, to something that was more probably primarily carbs, healthy, good, organic, gluten-free carbs, and then moderate protein and moderate fat. And so that was that big shift did not work out well for me. Bottom line is number one, right away, I did gain weight. I gained, uh, just like she said, about 10 pounds. I was up to 144. So remember the lowest I got was 134. I got back up to 144. Um, I didn't weigh myself until I kind of felt like I could see it in the mirror that I gained weight. And then when I weighed myself, I was like, oh shit. Now, the two big things that happened um, was that slowly but surely, um, I gained a little bit more weight and I could see it and I could feel it, but I did give myself a pass going into the holidays. You know, I did intentionally and deliberately, like I, I, I had a conversation with my husband. I, I said I wanted to start dieting right before the holidays. He's like, why would you do that? You know, give yourself a break. And I said, okay. And, and that was a big, kind of a big mindset thing for me to actually say, okay, I'm gonna just enjoy the holidays. And if I gain a few pounds, it's okay. Because frankly, you guys, what happened with keto is keto changed my life so much and my understanding about keto and insulin resistance and my body and how things work. It gave me the confidence to know that if I did enjoy the holidays and if I did gain five pounds or whatever, I finally felt like it'll be okay because I could lose it. Whereas in years past, I would never allow myself to ever do that because I was terrified of gaining a pound because I thought I could never lose it. It's a huge mindset shift. Um, so when we got to the end of uh, last year and the first week or so of this year, um, I just remember going, we were going next door to our neighbor's house for a dinner and I just went to put on a pair of jeans and it was like the first time in, in like over a year that a pair of jeans that I was wearing you know, my smaller size jeans, granted, but they were like tight on me and that was it. Once I did that, I was like, screw this, you know? I was getting stomach aches every single day and it would be, I was, I was just constantly, my husband and I would sit down to watch TV at night and I would say, I have to go make myself some toast, which is full of gluten. You know, it wasn't gluten-free bread, it was the bread for my husband. And I'd say, I have to go make myself some toast to settle my stomach. I was constantly making myself something to settle my stomach. Oatmeal, um, buckwheat or something in the morning. I mean, like all these things that I didn't really want to eat because I knew they were carbs, but I had to eat something like that or rice. I'd make myself some rice. Like I was constantly feeling nauseated or, you know, just like, Pains. I was waking up in the middle of the night with stomach pains. Now, could this be stress related to some of the other things I vaguely referenced? Yeah, but it was all the time. And coincidentally, it's not coincidentally, you guys. Not only had I just, I had this feeling that I wanted to go back keto, but then when the stomach aches just got so bad, there was one day I told you it was the middle of the week and I just finally decided this is it. And I was talking with my assistant that day, I was talking to my husband, and they both said to me, they said, I think you should go back on keto. You've always been happier on keto. You never had the stomach aches on keto. Plus, you know, you've got all these clients that you're coaching on keto, um, you know, and, and now you can track everything you're doing more effectively. In other words, what I can track is, I've had this experience of doing keto, hitting my goal weight, surpassing my goal weight, being so happy and, and literally being able to stay there. Then I've had this other experience of like going off keto and adding carbs in, but really not doing it the right way. I think it's very clear that with my level of insulin resistance, I need to start adding in carbs when I do um, a lot more slowly, a lot more deliberately and track and, and like 
have a notebook, have this stuff recorded so I know what foods work with me, what don't, what I'm wearing a continuous glucose monitor again on this arm. I'm starting to track my glucose um, so I can see what foods affect me and what foods don't. I mean, I learned during that time that um, I have a food reactivity issue with bananas. They make me break out on my skin bumps. So there's all kinds of things that you can learn when you're really tracking and paying attention to things. And data is, I've always said this, data is your best friend. I think I have a blog post or a podcast on that. I'll see if I can link that down below for you. But um, I, that's my plan is to not only, I've already been two weeks in, um, back on keto, I've already lost a little over two inches. Um, and I will be chronicling, of course, um, where I started, what my measurements were, and what my loss is, and when I hit my goal. Um, the difference is too, this time around, I'll be working out where I wasn't working out before. Um, the difference is this time, of course, I don't have the amount of weight to lose that I did before. And then lastly, when it's time for me to start incorporating carbs again, um, I am having a consult with my functional medicine doctor next week, and we will be much more strategic, you know? Maybe instead of having carbs every single day, that might look like something, it's, it might be more like, hey, you're gonna have high carb days one or two times a week versus, you know, being able to have them every day. I don't believe that that certainly is, I hope if you're watching this video, you don't walk away from this thinking that this is true for everybody. That's not my intention. My intention is simply to share my story with you so that if you are like me and you've had a similar experience, you can learn from what, I'm, what I've done and what I'm doing. Um, but I firmly believe that not everybody will have to watch carbs like, like I do. But I do think it is smart once you've gone keto, and this is what I'm now advising all of my coaching clients, um, once you hit your goal weight to really smartly kind of like, for lack of a better way of saying it, reverse out of keto, like really strategically add those carbs back in. Be more of a data hound, test things with your body more because there are a lot more women who have really sensitive um, ins insulin issues like me. And the cool thing is, is that I'm like 1000% being um, predominantly keto for the rest of my life. I never ever felt like I was suffering when I was on keto. I never had any intention of going off keto. Um, it wasn't like I was like, oh my God, when can I stop this? Um, was it fun eating gluten-free banana walnut muffins? Absolutely. Was it fun having, you know, going to this, this restaurant and having, you know, a bowl with quinoa in it, you know, and, and not measuring my quinoa? Yeah. Um, I actually let myself have what a burger two times with the bun. So that was that was a, a, a huge indulgement. I definitely let myself have gluten during that time, meaning some like good rye breads or breads at a, at a restaurant a couple of times. Um, I got really, really ill. I definitely have shown myself that gluten is a major red flag. Again, that's not everybody, but I to stay away from gluten. Um, and I also had pasta two times. We made a bolognese sauce, my husband made it, for uh, Christmas Eve and... All right guys, so here's the funny thing. I was just upstairs finishing my recording and uh, my brand new camera said, <laughs> essentially it was, I'm overheating, I need to cool down. I'm not quite sure <laughs> if I should take that as flattering or was I talking? Should I take that as flattering? I've turned my camera on too much. It's overheated. Or I need to shut up. I've been talking too much because I've overheated my camera. Or three, I just need to figure out what the hell is causing my camera. I've never had that happen before in my life. Brand new, expensive camera. We'll figure it out. So anyway, I'm coming down here in my office to wrap this up, um, hopefully picking up where I left off. And essentially, again, what I was saying, where I left off was, you know, we did the whole um, 
adding the carbs back in towards the end of the year. I let myself uh, enjoy the holidays. I wasn't trying to. I mean, on one hand, I absolutely want to impart to you. You know, I wasn't going, hey, it's a free for all. I'm going to eat whatever I want. I think I was sharing with you the bolognese sauce. That's what I was doing. We made bolognese sauce two times, Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, and it was the first time I had actual pasta in, I think, years and years and years and years, but I had pasta two times. But when I tell you guys that I said that I was letting myself have pasta, did I have a huge Olive Garden bowl of pasta? No. We, we made this delicious bolognese sauce, and when Steve and I dished out our servings, like, we had a reasonable serving, and then we the next day, I think we let ourselves have some leftovers. So in other words, the whole time that I was letting myself have carbs, there were some treats like that that I had. So I had some pasta. I had Whataburger with a bun on it two times because I just wanted to take, you know, I'm like, hey, I'm having carbs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it with the bread. It was, it was okay, but you know, the after effects were just not worth it. It was just not worth it. Um, so wanted to close up and, and say that, um, but again, I was eating by my calculations. And again, I really wish I was recording my data every single day. This is why I really want to do this on my fitness pal, recording my uh, progress photos, recording my measurements, recording my weight for myself, for emotional detachment, but also just to be able to track trends going forward with my health. I have a commitment to staying fit and healthy and within a healthy weight range, and this is what I'm willing to do. I don't think it's unhealthy. Some people might view that as obsessive or diet culture or whatever, and you're entitled to your opinion. Um, this is what, for me, takes the emotion out of it. I think it takes the, well, I know it does for me. So that's where I'm at. Um, but uh, again, um, those were like, my my biggest takeaways from going off of keto was i i was pretty surprised how bad the stomach aches were um and they were progressive like they were progressive in coming back and getting worse and more often that was interesting now that i've been back keto for probably about two and a half weeks now maybe almost three i feel like i have an eyelash in, in the eye um or maybe it's from trimming my bangs in front of you guys, sorry. Um, I have, the first thing that went away was the stomach aches, you guys. I felt better right away. Um, and like I told you, I've taken my measurements two times. I've already lost two plus inches. I wish I had my spreadsheet pulled up here. I would tell you exactly how many inches I've lost. But again, this is stuff I will be tracking, sharing here on my YouTube channel, sharing on my blog, so make sure you're tuned in there. Um, and I'll also be tracking my glucose levels. Um, and I'm, I'm just feeling better. I'm absolutely confident about um, seeing even better results this time around because not only am I back on keto and feeling better and <laughs> I'm adding more recipes, by the way, to my keto cookbook, which I'm gonna link up down below. So there's like, more diversity in my diet than ever, but I'm also gonna be working out this time around where I wasn't working out before when I did keto the first time. So um, I'm super excited, um, very happy. I will also update you guys what my doctor shares with me. I hope to just record that call and then I can um, share some of the clips here and then also on my blog. So that's that, but let me know what questions you guys have. Hopefully this was some helpful and interesting feedback for you. And then this way it'll explain to you, you know, when I say, hey, I'm back on keto and you're like, what's going on? Now you know the background. Um, but let me know if you have any questions on what I talked about here in this video, questions on keto in general, questions on anything I've mentioned, like my cookbook, I do offer not only one-on-one uh, -on -one keto coaching to help women uh, lose weight, but I also have a keto boot camp, which is like a self-paced um, video tutorial course where you can really learn how to do keto the right way and lose weight. Um, so there's kind of two options. There's more like me holding your hand and working with you one-on-one -on -one with coaching, and then there's do-it-yourself Netflix-style learning with my keto boot camp, and then of course there's my keto uh, cookbook as well. 
So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I will see you guys next time on The Kelly O Show. Hey everybody, thanks so much for tuning in. It's so good to be back and I am excited for you to watch this video and for to hear back from you. Please make sure that you leave comments with your questions and I'm gonna link up here to my, wow, that looks really I'm going to link up here to my keto playlist with tons of videos on my previous keto experience. And of course, we'll be adding to that with more new videos coming up on keto. Tune in.